Welcome back to TFC. Uh, today we're gonna go about we decided what subwoofer we're gonna use under the seat on the uh, Black Panther. And uh, let's get to it. Let me show you what we got. So you had a couple options. They do have a box out there that gives you six, maybe six subs. So we decided to go with the world famous. L7. This thing's good. Let's go with some details about this one. So what we have here, we have the L78 Q class. Now I order this online right now. The sales are really good. Uh, we all know why. So this one we got about 20% off, but usually they retail around $249. So here's the this is what you got on this. So what you have, you have a RMS. RMS stands for the power you can take continuously, you know, interruptions, 500 watts. We're gonna do four of these underneath the seat of the two of the Black Panther. Go ahead. It's a high quality sub. It has a little weight to it. Beefy. I love that the fact you have the push buttons. They're not cheap. They don't feel like they're gonna break. This thing has a little weight. Comes in at around comes in around 19 pounds. So this thing, you can, you can do a little workout with it. We're not sponsored by Kicker, but if Kicker want to sponsor me, send me some speakers or some more amps, door speakers, they can. Kicker, you can hit subscribe too. Also in this video, what we're going to give you guys, I'm going to give you my world famous Southern Smoke Ribs. So this is a truly uh, one of the best ones you're probably ever going to watch. Southern Smoke Ribs with Kicker Subs. So we have on the kicker subs, we got a good surrounding. This is patented technology. The kicker says that this square sub gets more surface space than a circle sub. Also, what I notice is this little induction, indenting, whatever it is, this part right here, stiffens the cone so it can take more power. It's one piece, so when heat, when heat is made inside, when the speaker is working itself out, it blows cooler and pull cooler area. That's what I'm told. You tell me if I'm right. But this is what we're going with. And then later on, stay, stay tuned. Hit subscribe to the channel. Um, we're going to go with some ribs in the backyard. We're going to smoke them in one of my smokers. And then we're also going to, uh, the amp that we'll be pushing this, we're going to go with a B2. We'll see which one we get. If you got any suggestions, put them down in the comment section. And let's get to it. Let me show you how this is going to fit inside the truck. So what we're doing with the Black Panther is we're just getting the basic components together. I understand that this is a factory truck, gonna be some factory wire. We got the Bose app in here, so we gotta do a couple things. Once I get a list of the the uh, interfaces that you you would need for your 17 GMC or your uh, Silverado, um, I'll put those in the next video with the description. But right now, what we're gonna have is this eight inch underneath the seat. All right, guys. So this is what we have. We have four eights. Now, one thing you can fit safely underneath your seat sixes. There is a box that uh, that's look beautiful. I'm trying to negotiate with some of you guys might know who I'm talking about. Um, see if I can uh, get a good price on a box. It's not a it's a very well put together box, but it's not a cheap box. And it was sixes, and that didn't work out. So I decided to go with the eights. Now, with the eights, I understand that I'm going to have to lift up this seat uh, two inches to get them to fit. Should fit, but I think that'd be good. So my goal is to build me a box with two eights here, two eights here, and have a have a center uh, vented ported box, pretty much a ported box. Try to get some low end out of these eights. Uh, we're gonna take the back seat out and put all the amps behind. The Black Panther will be gorgeous. Uh, we're debating right now placement front speakers. We'll do three ways. I'll show you a video of those two, and also we're gonna do three ways in the back. We might do something different where we put the mid base in the door and put your four and your tweet up here in the ceiling. To give you, uh, I guess what they call Atmos. Yeah, whatever. All right, but that's what we're going with. Stay tuned. Next, you see coming up is the rib recipe. All right, so let's get to cooking. We showed you the kicker sub that's going in the Black Panther. What we're gonna do today is our Southern Sticky Ribs. I go over what I put in here, the grub, um, the finishing touches we do. So let's get started. So what I do is I. While my fires get started, and I'll show you guys how to do this. I'll take my foil paper, 
And I write my four paper with my counter. You can pick it. If you got a counter, whatever counter you have, you do it how you want to do it. But I think prep makes this job a lot easier because anyone who knows when they're doing ribs, uh, takes a while to cut quite as special when you go out to eat. I like chicken. You just take it out, wash it, and do what you're going to do. Put it out the ribs and have to trim them. Show you how to take the membrane off. If you're not taking that back membrane off, you're not getting all your flavor. And that's a beautiful take. Alright, so we got a uh, nice slab of some baby back ribs meat. Take them out of the package. I like to pat dry them. You're gonna need that. I grab a small knife, soon to become a Nicholas to pump knives. Take your knife, put it in the corner, get it going. Just try to make you a little something to grab. They make tools, but a southern boy know how to do it with paper towels. Get a good grip in there. And you pull the membrane off. See, if you leaving that membrane on there, you know how to cook. So everything you done fed your family was a waste of time because it wasn't as good as mine. These ribs so good I can sell them. What's that, that guy from Louisiana? Go, oh, bonjour, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you say. You take that off so when you're smoking these ribs, that smoke will go past this protective layer. It will get inside deep sods in there. Just play some slow love music. Now on your rib, you can trim your rib how you want. The best way to get a rib is go to a butcher and tell him what you're looking to do and tell him what, how you're gonna smoke it and cook it and he can trim it how you want. I like to get mine trimmed like this. I kinda like these edges because I will usually cut this off once it's cooked, chop it up, and just have some bite side in rib tips. Some people leave their fat on. See, that? that's a vein running through there. You cook it slow, you can leave that vein in. If you're a fast heat cooker, some people cook really fast, quick, cut that vein out. Because when they bite into it, that vein, they're going to feel it, they're going to taste it, it's going to be nasty. I cook real slow, so that's going to break down. Now what I do, I come through right here, and I take a little fat off. Some people leave the fat on. That's not true. You don't want the fat on the ribs. Delicious ribs do not fall apart. A well-cooked rib should have a little pull to it. A little pull. When you bite into it, it should pull off. It shouldn't pull off the bone all the way. Anybody can cook a rib too much until it falls apart. That's easy to do. You get the rib cooked perfect when you just bite it. It pulls right off. I'll show you guys later. Now, this right here is a treat to my family. We got Omega right here. Dog, he had a clip. Good thing he must. The Saint, the Falcons must got him on their team. And we just trim off a little of that fat. That's gonna cook down, but you don't want it when someone comes in and they bite it. All they get is fat, 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 fat. They want fat. They eat pork butt. They eat a different part of the meat. Ribs, you want meat. When you got your good side of niggas do pork knives, makes the job a lot easier. Now they're supposed to be sending me some nice customers with a wood grain handle on the back of it. We'll see how that goes. But you need your good knife. You need to just trim all these little extras off. You can get it to your dogs if you want. You can keep it. Now, right here, you're getting down here to these little bitty small ones. You don't want nobody to bite and get all that in their mouth. That's fat. Some of it's going to cook off, but most majority of it ain't going to cook off. Not the temper that we're going to be cooking. We're gonna cook these ribs for four hours. Again, I'm gonna say that while the camera looking at me. Now we'll go out here and check on our fire. We're gonna cook on these ribs for four hours. All right guys, so we got the grill going. We got the charcoal, we won't say no name because we ain't got no sponsorship, so we ain't sharing the wealth right now. Tell them to call me, hit subscribe or something. We got the charcoal going. This is our grill. 
yes, it looks like a trash can, but some of the best ribs come out of here. They say these ribs are so good, they help win the war. Yeah, they're good. We'll let that charcoal go and get this shot good inside. See how it looks. It goes on a heat plate via wood box. I'll tell you about my mixture later. How to, this is key. Alright, now come on, let's go inside. We got our uh, so let our ribs come to room temperature. Now we got clean hands. We get started on this right here. Back up, cameraman, back up. Ooh Good old fashioned, non-branded mustard. People say, what? I don't like mustard on my ribs. Well, you don't know how to cook ribs then. So you put the mustard on the rib first. You put the mustard on the rib first. The mustard's gonna, when it cook, the flavor of mustard gonna cook out. And what it does is let the season that you add to it form a crust. Like when you have crushed southern tilapia or crushed southern chicken, I don't know. When you're eating that non-southern food, because this is southern food here. Put a crust over it. So when you bite to that rear, you bite through that crust. And if you cook it right, get a little crush to it, the softness of that meat. That's why you put mustard on it. It's this simple. Pour some mustard on me. Hey, get a wild shot of me doing like this. Pour some mustard on me. Work that much to end. You want it on every crack crevice you can get it on, especially on the edges, and I'll show you why. Y'all know how to cook real, y'all. I know what you're saying to yourself. You're like, I have never cooked ribs like that before in my life, and that's true. That means that you ain't never cooked ribs the right way. You've been cooking ribs the wrong way. North Carolina, South Carolina, no matter what Carolina you're from, they got no ribs. I'm losing out of Georgia boy ribs. This is a losing out of Georgia boy ribs right here. See, we, we pick one state. We need to split it in half. Now you got your ribs all mustard up. I'm going to show you what you do next. All right, so now we got our mustard on there. We got that crust going to get cooked on there. We're going to go with my splits of blend of season. We'll eventually bring it to you. We're going to have salt, brown sugar, granulated garlic, granulated onions, paprika, chili powder, Black pepper, white pepper, mustard seeds, and then a little bit of something that you can't know about. Now with your ribs, whoop, you're gonna sprinkle that on there real good. You're not playing with them. You're not playing with them. You wanna cover it. Get it in there real good. Now, remember earlier I said you wanna make sure you get the mustard on the ends. You want season right there. You want to put some season on that. That's when people bite into it. It'll fall off. Don't worry about it. The must going to catch what it can catch. You want to make sure that you season them edges. You want to get them edges good. Because that's what people, when your ribs good, you get that good. Look at my camera, man. You get that right and these ribs right, that's the most important when people suck on. They go, turn to the side. That's when you know your ribs good. They're eating your ribs and putting them back on the plate. Your ribs ain't good. Now remember, the must going to catch what it can catch. Can't over season them when you use mustard, baby. It's gonna put season where season can be stuck. You know what he's saying? Man, look at all that season on his ribs. You gotta put that much season on the rib, they ain't good. The last time you ate raw meat with no flavor. This is a southern boy right here. See, it comes off. Season only going where it need to be. I ain't got a problem with season. The season ain't got a problem with me. That's how you make that. Now we want, we're going we gon' before now on my rib thing, that rib good. I see I'm touching that rib, that season ain't coming off. That's no you did it right, you had the right amount of mustard. Dude, for my smoker, I take my ribs and I cut them in half so I can hang them. For your smoker, you do what you gotta do. And this is just to prove a pet point to you. When you don't season your rib right, they look like that. Nobody want that. Nobody want that. Take a little mustard right there. What that lady said? Ain't nobody got time for that. Southern reels, baby. Put your little mustard on there. Mm. Get 
get that crushed. You got that real so good. He's real. You can't cuss on YouTube. Put your little season right there. Now, if you want to know what's in my season, hit subscribe first and then rewind to what I was telling you. Now, I personally like to get my reels ready. And I like to let my reels sit close to room temperature. See how they start to turn a little darker? See they start to turn darker? That means that the moisture is coming out to the season and making it stick. Ooh, these going to be so good. Now, these are world famous reels. You ask someone, they say they never heard of them. That's how famous they are. Hey, the wood blend is where it's at. Sometimes I do pecan, that's my favorite, but I couldn't find any pecan lately. If you know what's I'm at, put it in the comment and then hit subscribe. So what we have, we have maple, cherry, and apple. And what I do is, I take my first 45 minutes of smoking is gonna be my maple. I put my maple at the bottom. I smoke my ribs for four hours. Then I take my cherry, and I put my cherry on top of my maple. And then I take my apple, and I put my apple with a deep, rich, smoky, maple sweet flavor. And we're gonna finish it off with a sweet apple. So when you bite into those ribs with those seasons, it's gonna give you different textures and layers of flavor. You're gonna bite until you have a little heat from that pepper, and then that sweetness. It's the sweet one in these ribs. And that's how you do your wood. So, I have a vertical smoker, because I'm a real smoker. So I put my ribs in like this here. I take the, the thin part and put it at the top, because it cooks differently. Mm, let's go. Don't touch it again because if you're looking, it ain't cooked. All right, so now we're gonna take them off. Then the ribs, after about two hours, they're taking all the smoke they're gonna take. So if you don't have your flavor right, they ain't gonna be in there. You take brown sugar, you take a quarter cup of brown sugar, and you make sure you get it measured right by using Nicholas the Pump measuring cups. Eventually, we'll have a link underneath. Take a quarter cup of brown sugar, it's gonna melt when we get back in there, flip it down. Right on top of that brown sugar. Let's wrap. See, we cook nice and a little bit. These will start to retract away. And go right back on the grill. Simple as that. There you go, we're going right back on the grill. So after you take them off, you put your, your, your quarter cup of uh, brown sugar in there and you let them cook some more, that's going to caramelize the uh, outside of them. And this is what you end up with, a beautiful, reddish color. This is a gorgeous rib. Oh my god. Me, I like my ribs not falling off the bone. I like them with a little pull. That's when you know you got a real rib. Anybody can cook a meat until it gets soft and then it falls apart. That's a stew. That's a roast. That's not a rib. You want that rib where it just breaks apart. Now this is freshly out of the grill. If you can touch this rib, see how good this rib cuts. See how good that rib cuts? You see that reddish color? Let you know you smoked that real perfect. Now, what make the ribbing taste better is when you use these knives. We'll put a link later on coming.
Tu es pour You add that pepper, the garlic, the onions, all the things we said that it was in this rub. You put them on there, you smoke them with my method of three wood smoking, one layer, maple, the cherry and apple on the left and right side so it burns through all those flavors. You get a unique taste to it. You get, you get a, a hint of pepper at the beginning, the sweetness, and then that brown sugar to finish it off. You get a bam, another hit of pepper. A little heat to it. Not spicy, but heat. Mm. 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 Brian Nixon ain't got nothing on these ribs. Hit subscribe for more recipes. And we be bringing some more recipes of my ribs and pork butts and all type of food that you would eat during the summer or winter time when you're working on your car, heading to car shows, everything a man do when you're traveling. Hit subscribe. Thank you. Yeah, I know what y'all miss.